Hi. So today, um, week 14 already. Okay. So today, week 14 already, 20 of September. I think not all of you are here, but we should proceed. Ready, 10, 6 a.m. So we should proceed. So I know that today we should have presentation. However, before we proceed, before we proceed with our presentation, I want to finish our lecture first. So last week on 13 of September, week 13, we already cover chapter 13, data management design okay last chapter mm, yes correct last chapter chapter 13 data management design so last week we already stop up to the sql this one Okay, yeah, correct. 13 of September, as you can see here, we stopped here last week, okay? The, selecting the format of the storage structure query language, or we call it as SQL. So before we present, oh, sorry, before you guys proceed with your presentation, can we finish this lecture? Not Because I think we only have around 15, 15 more patch to go. It won't be long. This is more or less like a concept. Nothing new diagram on this lecture. So is it okay if we proceed with this one? First? Okay then. Thank you, Elvin. So let me proceed with this one first. Okay. So last week, I stopped at here, selecting the format of the storage, which is the SQL. Yeah, SQL. So SQL or yeah, structure query language, or usually we, we call it as SQL. So what do we use or what is this SQL used for? So usually, it's not usually, SQL, we use SQL to access data in table. Okay, table in our, oh, I, I haven't record, sorry, sorry. record first okay so uh, last week we stopped at here sql so sql we use sql structure level uh, structure query language we use sql for access data in table table or db because like i mentioned db first and then we come to table and column okay so yeah we use sql to access data in db so if you want to be a full stack developer full stack developer which is you touch the front and the back end you need to be uh you need to know how to use sql sql is first it is a basic and then it is quite easy actually for SQL. Okay, so in SQL we have this few command which is create, edit, and delete table. Okay, not delete DB. I mentioned table is not is under the DB. Okay, so for this one you need to be very careful. If you want to delete table, delete the table. Do not delete the whole DB. Okay, add, edit, and delete data. The data is referring to the data under our table. Okay, display. Display data from one or more related table and display data computed from data in one or more related table. Okay, so display. How do we display data? Display is this one is the common common way actually. If you want to view, view or select data. Okay, select all. This is all. That means we want to view all data from the table. I believe you guys study this in your DB subject. Okay, so from customer. Customer is our table here. Okay, customer where? Customer ID. Customer ID is 77. Okay, that's mean customer is the table. 
customer ID is the column and 77 is referring to the data, particular data that we want to view. Okay, actually you can select all from customer so it will display all but however we have this customer ID. Uh, what is it mean here? By one or more related table because in DB, I believe you know, you guys know already how to join the table if you want to select this one and this one. I mean this table and this table. Okay, like joining them. And then next is selecting persistent format. Okay, selecting persistent format. So here is sequential or random access, which we already see last week. Okay, sequential relational DBMS database management database management service. Yeah, and object RDBMS and object oriented DBMS. So here, this is like a table actually. They already listed. It is listed here the strength, weakness, data type supported, types of application system, storage, and future need. Okay. So here, let's look. This one is actually quite easy, quite straightforward, the meaning here. So sequential or random access for the strength. It is short-term data storage. Okay, it is not temporary, short-term, already mentioned here. Short-term data storage. Okay, handle diverse data need. Diverse, that's mean they can cover like diverse here in DB referring to the... I do not know how to explain, but diverse, that's mean it's not specific or it's not, yeah. Diverse, that's mean they do not, they do not only focus on one specific data need. Yeah, they do not specific on one data need, okay, for RDBMS. We usually call this as RDBMS. And then object relational DBMS on handle complex data. So this one is usually for big. Complex data is referring for one complex system, which of course with the complex data. Usually it is a big data, big size of data. Okay, how do you know if it is complex data or not? First, usually we will see from the size of our of our DB. Yeah, so the size of our data, you can refer to the size of your DB. And then object-oriented DBMS support or oh, oh, object oriented and then the weakness is redundant redundant data duplicate for relational rdbms cannot handle complex data because they don't focus on one specific and then limited support limited support and technology still new for or oh, oh, uh, object oriented dbms so, and then the data type this one for sequential random and access, it can cover simple and complex. For RDBMS, it can cover simple. For object RDBMS, usually people will go for complex if they prefer, if they want to use ORDBMS. And then object oriented, it is simple and complex as well. So type of application system, okay? This one is the example. So for sequential random is transaction, RDBMS, transaction processing and decision making. O object RDBMS, transaction processing and decision making. And object oriented DBMS is transaction processing and decision making. As you can see here, types of application, only this one. Sequential and random access, they only do transaction processing. Why? As you can see here, they only do short-term data storage. That means they will hold the data temporarily. Temporarily, yeah. And then storage format, it is depend on your system, organization, or depends on your business, okay? And then future need, poor prospect, and future prospect. Okay, so usually only for simple, it's not simple, not complex data, they will go for this one. Uh, random access or sequential. Okay, usually if they want to have a complex, they will usually go for this one. So it is very important actually when you want to, because you guys study SE, right? So I shouldn't mention that. However, when you want to develop or design a system, it is very important not only to look from the system perspective as well as the DB2. You need to see from the DB perspective. 
Okay, this is very crucial because if usually the front end designer or front end developer they will only concern on the they will only look at the front end how they want to design or what the user requirement however it is very important and sometimes it is even can be complex too for the db part okay to tackle what is the requirement okay next mapping pd pd is here is referring to problem domain class to rdbms relational database management so mapping mapping or map all concrete problem domain class to the rdbms table so what is map mapping i think i mentioned i forgot already but mapping is like we want to point like we want to point this table go to which uh this table this particular field go to which table okay mapping so if you are a ba you will learn about this thing a lot mapping this one mapping you cannot study in class i mean like this one is not covered in class because this knowledge is not uh you study in class you cannot get this knowledge in class you can only get this uh, knowledge when you already have that experience okay mapping second map single value attribute to column of the table and then map method to store procedure or to program module so here is the example sql store procedure okay so this one is the procedure the here class attribute method this one is the method the function so as you can see here we have this one client so client they have client id client name company name and company telephone uh, company phone number okay so mapping is like we pointing we map we pointing from one column to one table or from that particular field from the front end we focus to one db or one column okay so here mapping pd again pd problem domain classes to rdbms so here is the example map single value which is aggregation and association relationship to a column that store the key of that related table okay so we have one to one relationship here from client to creative staff okay under client okay we only capture this client id and client id is from here client and then staff staff id is the staff id here why they only take this one because under one client they will be only marked this is like the unique key unique key for the client so for one client they have this client id and they will have the staff id this one is the unique id uh yeah unique unique id that's mean they for client id and staff id they cannot duplicate store the key okay so they cannot duplicate it is a unique key for both client and staff it is a unique key so each of the client and each of the staff they will only for sure referring to one staff or one client because or oh, from that unique id okay next mapping pd classes to rdbms again so map multi-value attribute and repeating group to new table and create uh one to many association from the original table to the new one okay so here it's already highlighted from client under client we have this attribute id name and favorite band favorite band oh sorry favorite brand okay so they create uh the new table which is this one how they get this one is from this one favorite brand so from client first before we move to here from client we have this client id and client name which is the unique key like i mentioned just now okay it is not duplicated and then from this one particular client they have a new class which is oh so they have a new class which is favorite brand okay so under this favorite brand too they will call back the client id and the brand Okay, next, this one is multi-value aggregation. Aggregation and association relationship. Okay, aggregation. Association to a new associative table that relate to two original table to the new associative 
table okay from the two original table to a new uh, table okay new associative table okay so copy the pk uh, primary key from both original table to the new associative table like i mentioned primary key primary key in your db primary key is like the unique key okay primary key is the unique key and then you have one more term which is i mentioned last week is the foreign key so they have different function actually the primary key when they go to other table they will become the foreign key so primary key is the unique key like i mentioned just now so they copy the primary key from both original table oh, oh, sorry sorry from from the original table to the new associative table so the primary key or like i mentioned the unique key is client id and book id okay so this one already when you see they have this client id and book id as the primary key or as i mentioned it is a unique key so this one is confirmed already it's not confirmed already that's mean they are pointing to one particular or one specific for example here client id so they will uh pointing to one client id and then this client id will see what is the book id that bind to this client id for example client id is one two three and then this uh they will see what is the book id is bind under this one two three so for example another book id is four five so they know already this four five is bind under one two three which is the client id okay for aggregation for aggregation and association relationship of mixed type copy the pk primary key from the single value side one to one or zero to one of the relationship to new column in the table on the multi value side one to many or zero to many of the relationship that can store the key of the related table so um, client 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 id client name client id and client name so under campaign okay they will have a new one okay which is client id so as you can see here they have the same one which is campaign id and campaign name campaign name under these two they will only plug or they will only like bind the purpose of pk actually in db right the purpose of pk or the unique key is actually so that they can uh focus or they can bind anything that related to that one specific id okay oh sorry unique key or id here is referring to the id so this one is the unique key same goes with this one too okay Ensure that the primary key of the subclass instance is the same as the primary key of the superclass. Okay, this one they mentioned again about the sub and the superclass. So super is like the parent. Yeah, just remember super is the parent and sub is the child. Okay, so of course they will inherit in, inherit some of the behavior, uh, some of the attribute. So ensure that the primary key, the unique key, PK is the unique key of the subclass instance is the same as the PK of the superclass. Okay, so the PK unique key of the sub of the child must be same with the superclass or the parent class. Okay, because like I said, it will bind whatever related to that one PK or unique, unique key, unique, unique ID. This primary key is very important, especially when you are see when you have a uh, one one complex data. Last time when I play with data for a uh, program, so like I mentioned, I was from banking, so of course it is a complex system. So how do I it's not I how do we focus on the how do we handle that data is only we focus on the PK unique key. So we need to find what is the unique key from that table. For example, the unique key from our table is our CIF, customer, customer information file, if I'm not mistaken, CIF stand for. So we, every time you want to search, for example, one data, we doesn't need to go across all the DB. We only need to find what is the CIF. Okay, next, optimize storage. 
efficiency. First, no redundant data. No redundant data. In DB, okay? In DB, when you create a DB, when you want to create a DB, last time we use MySQL. So, MySQL if I'm not mistaken. So, how to avoid redundant data is or how you want to avoid the user from entering the redundant data is actually when you want to create the DB or when you want to create the table. I forgot already. How's the back end? But we can take or we can check for this one. Okay. Is it the data must be unique or not? Okay. That one can avoid redundant data. So no redundant data. Why? It is waste of space and allow more room for error. Okay. Minor error. So few null value in table. Null. Empty. Difficult to interpret. This one too we can avoid. So this one. I remember exactly this one. For table or column. We can specify this one. Allow null or not. So we only check the table. Okay. So this one is. Um, this one is to avoid the user to leave the. For example, in the front end. We see from the front end perspective. For example, if they want to key in any of information. Null value. That's mean, for example, for the name. We tick at the name column name fail yeah name fail if we take allow null that's mean the name can be empty okay so it is very difficult at the back end because we do not know who's that data belong to so that's why it is mentioned here difficult to interpret okay optimize storage efficiency normalization okay tell us how well form data in is in our dbms okay Reduce data redundancy like I mentioned just now. Okay, so we have four levels in normalization, 0, 1, 2, 3. So they have different different level, of course. So first, for, this, for the first one, normalization rules not apply. Second, no multi-value multi -valued fields depend on a whole primary keys. And the last one, no field depend on non-primary key field. Okay, so this one we will see in this table actually. So this one, normal first, second, up to third. So here is the table. It's not a table. It's like a explanation. So do any tables have repeating fail? So do some record have different number of columns from other records? So here it is mentioned the table. So um, do they have the repeating fail? So yes, remove the repeating fail. Add new table that contain the field that repeat. No, the data model is in. 1 and F. This is very common actually. Especially when you are creating your DB. Okay. So sometimes sometimes we have that repeating field. What is repeating field? For example, you already declared that one field to that one name. For example, field A. Yeah. So you already declared that one name to that one field. Okay. And then next, you still want to declare to that one. Uh, to the same name. So you need to remove the repeating field. Add a new table that contains the field that repeated. So, yeah. And then we move to the 1 and F. 1 and F is referring to the normal form. Okay, so is the unique primary key made up more than one field? If do, if so, do any field depend on only one part of the primary key? So, remove the partial dependency. Add a new table that contains the field that are partially dependent. Okay, so when you're creating a table, you need to see actually where is that uh, particular PK. Okay, when it, because if I'm not mistaken, not all, is it correct what I'm saying? Not all table, I forgot already how I did last time. Not all table have the PK. No, 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 they must have the PK. Yeah, we need to have the PK. So remove the partial uh, dependency, add a new table that contain the field that are partially dependent. That means they are dependent to the PK table. And then the second one is do any field depend on another non-primary key field? 
So if yes, do remove the transitive dependency at a new table that contain the field that are transitively dependent. Okay, they only show up to zero, one, two here. Okay, let me conclude to you this part. If you don't understand, so the key here or the important part here is the primary key. So you need to know when you want to link or, or connect, link or connect the table, you need to know the primary key. Okay, so you need to know the primary key. And if that one, but usually this one only happen to a complex database. Here they don't really mention database, they mention a table. Yeah. So only happen during the complex table. So here, optimize storage efficiency for tree and F. Okay, tree and F normal form. Here in this table, there's nothing new actually, but this one is the example for an F for the third level. Okay. How do they handle the third level for normal form? Is it correct? Yeah. Mm, which is no field depend on the non-primary key field. Okay, no field depend on non-primary key field. This one is refer back to patch number 26. Okay, so this one is the sample of the table. You can, I leave this one for you to read because this one is a straightforward table actually. There's nothing new here in this table actually it is only show the concept of tree and f which is no field depend on non-primary key field okay so next let's move so just now is one uh, zero one two three level of normal form so now let's move to the optimized storage efficiency so again non-functional requirement so throughout the semester I think if I am not mistaken, this term non functional we only covered. I think if I'm not mistaken, on the chapter two. Okay, on the chapter two. So again, non functional requirement, even in your assignment, if I'm not mistaken too, we don't really focus on non functional requirement. Okay, so non functional requirement, especially actually when we go to the data gathering, data gathering, data, yeah data gathering requirement gathering requirement gathering this one usually will be the second one or the last one they will discuss non-functional requirement so non-functional requirement okay operational requirement so this one operational performance security and political and cultural requirement this one mentioned already this point i remember mentioned in our second or third lecture not i don't remember however they men mentioned again here the same point so operational requirement so if you don't remember what is non-functional requirement so non-functional requirement is actually not it's actually requirement up to the system however non-functional is different with functional because non-functional is not the what the system should do instead non-functional is how how they should perform their system okay so for the first one operational requirement dam dam is actually stand for data access and manipulation we will see this term lecture in the next slide okay dam data access management data technology that must be used what approach that we know we need to use second performance requirements dam layer speed and capacity for speed and capacity um, like i mentioned just now like literally second just now i said non-functional usually will be the last or the second one that they will uh, discuss. So DAM layer speed and capacity. So for simple system, they don't really focus on speed and capacity. I mean speed is how fast the system can respond. Or for example, for example, if we ask the user or if the, we ask the user to click a form, sorry, to create a new data by using a form. So how much time that they will take or the system will take to save whatever data that they already key in into the form to our DB and reflect back to the user, okay? The speed and capacity. This is very crucial.
okay especially in banking for example if you already do the transaction how many millisecond millisecond not even a second but the transaction should be reflect already in your uh, record and then the capacity how big it can go and then security requirement again the security access encryption and backup access control who can get the access control encryption is a what is encryption mm, what is encryption student there's two term encryption and decryption decryption is the reverse process what is encryption i think i mentioned last time what is encryption alvin alvin what is encryption oh noel what is encryption who else is here rachel what is encryption rachel Wang Zisheng, what is encryption? Change the info. Yeah, not viewable. Uh, yeah, we have answer by L. L. Yeah. So encryption. Okay, encryption. Like I mentioned just now, encryption. There's one more term which is decryption. Decryption is the process or the reverse process. So encryption is a process we convert. Convert, yeah. We convert the file. For example, I have this one notepad, okay, one notepad which contain the data, sensitive data, usually sensitive data or sensitive information. So we will convert this data into the unreadable, unreadable format. Okay, that means when people open the file, they cannot, they cannot understand the data. So in order for us to read back what the info or what the data in that particular file, we need to do the reverse operation, which is decryption. So I think you guys know what is encryption, okay? And backup, okay, backup is very crucial. Backup data, yeah, backup data. Mm, backup, I want to say actually, but I'm not confirmed about this one. I want to say that usually at the night for bank, they have this EOD process end of day, but for backup, I'm not confirmed. So I don't want to say this. Maybe they will do the backup at night during the EOD, but I'm not sure the, this one, the backup. Okay. And then next is political and cultural requirements. So that formats currency and condition. This one, even though this is under non-functional and it is under the last point, that format, that format is very crucial. Okay, that format is very crucial, especially when you already decide the format at your back end. And then currency conversion. This one too. This one too is actually I involved last time due, uh, to do the currency conversion between US dollar and Cambodia money. So this one is quite hard actually because the currency is different every day, every day. Okay, so we need to capture the current or the today, for example, today, the currency is different. It's not currency, what's the term? Huh? I forgot already what's the term. But it is different. The rate, yeah, the rate of change is different. So we need to capture the debt first and then, oh, we need to capture the rate first and then do the conversion. Okay. And then this one is the one I said just now, DAM, approach. So data access and manipulation, DAM. Classes act as the translator between object persistent. Object persistent is in this lecture up last week, and the problem domain object. Okay, so there should be one DAM class for each concrete problem domain class. Okay, concrete class is a class that has the implementation for all of its method. This one I don't remember to which chapter. But already explained to what is concrete class. And then this one should be the last. Yes. Hmm. The last one. This one I already see. I already checked. There's nothing new actually. But this one is data management and problem domain layer design for the patient appointment. So this one is the uh, overall view or overall data for the AM class, which has mentioned here. So class act as translator. Like the translator between the object persistent and the concrete class. Okay, and the problem domain object. Okay, so each of the AM, so they should have it 
I mean concrete, each of the concrete problem domain class should have the DAM. So here. So here they are mapping using the AM and the concrete class. Okay, so this one too, I leave it to you guys to read. Like I said, there's nothing new, only they apply the concept of the AM. Okay, what is the concept of the AM? You can scroll back to the previous slide. So here in this chapter, you have familiar with several object persistent format. I already explained last week, last week on Monday, what is object persistent? So able to map problem domain object to the relational format, able to optimize RDBMS for object storage and access, and able to design the data access and manipulation class. I think if I'm not mistaken again, this one is the first time in this course or in this subject we I mentioned about mapping or map. If I'm not mistaken, nah, this one is my first time mentioned about this mapping. Okay, so that's all. I think, yeah, this one is my last lecture for this semester. So, yeah, so this one is my, is the last part in our lecture for OOAD. So here, So here, okay, so like I said, last lecture, right? So here I already cover chapter one up to chapter 13. Okay, I didn't skip any of this and I follow the exact course plan. Uh, the plan in our course plan. Okay, so if you think that I miss or I skip any of this lecture note, you can tell me, but I am like 99.99% sure that I didn't skip any of this because I follow the course plan. Okay, so that one is the end of our lecture for this semester. Okay, so for the lecture not just, lecture not just now or for the lecture just now, is there any question? Is there any question? If not, can we have a break, like five minutes? Or can we start back the presentation at 10.50 a.m.? So for the presentation, before we stop, last week, what's the on Monday? 13. 13, 13, 13, 12. Where's my note for last 13? Okay. Ten. Join. Fourteen is twisting. My note. Uh oh, where is my note? Of the tin. Twelve. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't it on 15? <gasps> 7. 
presentation why I missed. Oh, yeah, Nael, thank you. Your presentation was on last week on 15 September. So last week, oh, I almost freak out. I lost the data. Yeah, 15 September. So last week, the first group was Ian, Wong, Jeremiah, and Nathan. Okay, and then the next we have Wong, Lim, Kelvin, Daniel. No L, is it? However, I stopped halfway at Lim. Is it correct what I said? We stopped halfway at Lim. Lim Jing Ming. Ah, yeah, so yeah, 15. Ah, oh, thank you, no L. So yeah, we will start back at 11. Sorry, we will start back at 11. Starting from Lim, no L group yesterday. Okay. So we will see. I see you back at 11. Thank you.
Hi guys, I'm sorry, but can we start now? Okay, so last week I stopped at Lim. So I think your group last week already part two, right? Uh, yeah, part two. Lim, check out module 3.2. Uh, Is it? Uh, under state chart diagram. State chart, okay. Okay, you can start. Okay. And good morning, Miss, and my fellow uh, classmate. So today we're going to uh, continue from our last week uh, presentation. So I'm going to present back again my state chart diagram for uh, the checkout module, which is to select e wallet as payment method. So first, uh, customer, uh, we select a payment method. Then the request we will then go for the authentication. So if the authentication had failed, which the request is denied, then the system will display an error message. So if the login credential validity is approved, which the system will then show the account to the customer, then if the amount of the account is insufficient, then the customer is to request to top up his account amount and then the system will update the account amount and until it reaches the total of uh, the transaction uh, total then which means the amount is sufficient then lastly it, the system will then update the select payment method and moving on next to uh, Kelvin I'll be presenting the state diagram for the 
admin module will be doing the ad will be doing the admin admin administrator first the uh, add we click the add admin and then the new form will the detail form will be presented and then when it's filled and then uh and and then submit it it will check if it if the details are valid or not if it fail it will deny and display error and then stop up. and then if it's if it uh if the the details are valid it will be approved and then it will the new detail the animation with the new details will be stored in the database uh, and then display success message and then we'll end uh, that's it for mine so i will present for my for my module uh, product module which is uh, based on the use case diagram was adding uh, adding product details so for the first time uh, for the first uh, for the starting time the beginning uh, adding product which means, which means add new product details based on the name, ID, the name, the, the category, the price itself, and the and the quantity unit of quantity and the image itself. It's based on the based on the la the, the, the part one uh, for my part one or part one uh, and then it will go to process processing. So it will process two two uh, two parts into two parts. So it will which they need which which is the product details fertility. If the if go through if if it, if it true which mean which mean doesn't have any redundancy any any same characteristic or any 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 weird weird symbol or any everything during the input is during input or during input it will go to place it will place to add product which it add to place to all product add product and store into the database itself go to the store database. And in, in, the, in the same time, it will display the product itself has been edited in the database and it will display it into the catalog, which is the menu. And it will display the product into, the, it will go to the other side. Up. For the, for the false, false part, which is the, which is the incorrect one, if you, if you go to, if false, if false, it will deny because, because it had the redundancy, if, if, if it had redundancy inside the database itself, it will deny deny the the new product details, or is it, it will it will never it will never it will never show it into the catalog itself. So it, it will straight forward to the end 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 site, and it will end the end the process. And that's it for my adding product details in stage chart diagram. So I will proceed it to Noel for his customer module. So first, uh, this is for the. Uh, update account details for the customer. So first it will go to the unauthorized user. So if, if the customer is unauthorized user, it will uh, register an account and it will then process. So if the user detail validity is true, it will then be placed and then at the same time we'll add the customer and then store it into the database. Whereas if if the, the user detail is false, it will then deny and process. So is it, that's it. So we go to the final class diagram. So here, uh, as, as you can see, it's too small. So instead, go to the draw IO. So here, there are. So several tables here. So we start from the customer and admin. So this two table is inherited from the parent class called user table. So yeah, so this one will share the same uh, data members and uh, method from user table. And next, so the customer and shopping cart. So the shopping cart can uh, belong to one customer and one customer can only have one uh, shopping cart. And for shopping cart item and shopping cart, uh, shopping cart item can only belong to one shopping cart and shopping cart can uh, belong to zero to many shopping cart item. And so for uh, product and shopping cart, uh, shopping cart item has uh, one product only and a product can have can belong to zero to many shopping cart item. And as for wishlist item, a wishlist item can 
uh, have one product, but one product can only belong to zero to many wishlist item. And for wishlist, wishlist item, so wishlist can uh, have zero to many wishlist item, but a wishlist item can only belong to one and only one wishlist. And for customer, uh, customer and transaction, a customer can have zero to many transaction, but a transaction can only belong to one and only one customer. And as for the administrator, the administrator can be managed by zero to one per administrator, but one administrator can manage zero to many administrators. And as for uh, administrator and uh, product, so an, an admin can uh, manage one to many product, but uh, I mean, sorry, an admin can manage zero to many product, but a product can be managed by one to many uh, administrator. So uh, that's it for my uh, final class diagram. I will hand over to Solomon to explain the uh, deployment diagram. Uh, so in our deployment diagram, first we have three node. One is device and one is web server and the other is database server. So first the uh, end user client will communicate with the internet using the protocol uh, HTTP and HTTPS uh, with the internet and then then the internet will pass the request to the another node, which is the web server. You also also using the protocol HTTP or HTTPS. And then the web server will communicate with the node database server using the protocol TCP and IP. I think that's it. Uh, so yeah, that's all for our group. Uh, thank you. So. Thank you, Wong, Lim, Kelvin, Daniel, Noel. So before I ask question, is there any question from student? Is there any question? No. Uh, Jeremiah, do you have question, Jeremiah? Is Jeremiah even here? No. Okay, so before I ask, I ask them a question, last week I remember, I think on Ian group, right, I mentioned that we cannot have different... Regarding the server on deployment diagram, I said that usually uh, oh, we cannot put the, uh, our application and our DB on different server. Actually can. So I was wrong last week. So yeah, I take back what I said last week. We can put the application and the server. Oh, sorry, we can put the DB and the application in a different server. Okay. Web config. Yeah, but we need to, but the one is back end. Okay, so yes, we can have different server for our application and our DB. So since no question from the student, I have a question. First is to Wong. Let me open back first part. On your, however, this group, hmm, why you send me your, <clears throat> for for both part, for both part actually part one and part two, your file name is not following the format of the file name that you should send. This one is on the test. Oh, for the first one, question to Wong for part one, 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5
5.1 detail use case diagram 5.1 product browsing module Wong Zi Sheng. In your diagram here, you have an extend class, right? Wong. So is this extend class is compulsory or is it an optional? It's not class. This case. Yeah. Is it compulsory? Uh, for which use case means? Uh, uh, part one. Okay. Part one on um, section five, detail use case diagram, and then 5.1, product browsing module. So you have this extend function, correct? Mm. View product details and customer authentication. I won't ask you on this use case, uh, use case, but I want to ask you for extend. Is it optional or is it compulsory? It is optional. For the process? It is optional for extend. Mm. Mm, yes or no? Yes. Just op yeah, it's optional. It is an optional. Are you asking me or are you telling me? I'm saying yeah, uh, it's optional, yeah. So you're like confused. Okay, that's all my question for you. I just want to know. Do no, you I think mean, it is compulsory? It is optional, Miss. I repeat many times already with the extent. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, thank you, Wong. Next, I have question to Lim. Lim, yeah, Lim. So Lim, I want to ask you for this system. Can you give me example for non-functional requirement? Lim Jing Ming. Can you give me an example of non-functional requirement? Hold on, miss. I'm thinking. Okay, okay. Take your time. While you are thinking, can I move to Kelvin? Sure. Okay, sure. Okay, Kelvin, I want to ask you, you have this admin, right? I mean, you have this admin. You are on admin function, right, Kelvin? Oh, uh, yeah. Correct. So, I want to ask you, for admin, can they manage other admin? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, the admin can remove the other admin? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. So the admin can remove the other admin. Mm -mm -mm. Okay then. Okay, Kelvin. However, this one is not wrong. I just want to share with you. Usually for a system, right, we have this uh user. It's not user. Yeah, it's a use user of our system. Admin. Yeah. We have other than admin, usually for a comp for a normal system, usually we will have few admin. But for a complex system, we will have this one role. Yeah, role. The term is role. We will have this one role known as super admin. So usually, admin, they cannot touch each other. That means admin cannot delete other admin. However, this all admin is under one super admin. But like I said, your system is not wrong. I'm just telling you. Okay? So in real... So, so in real uh outside is uh, so in working so in working usually got one super admin uh, and then yeah, yeah correct okay. usually lah. Okay. but this one is not wrong too yeah i'm just telling usually we will have this super admin and then this all admin will be under admin okay so um, i have question it's not here yeah, question to daniel on your this one is with daniel i open back your part this one is on part one. It's 
system training and adapted update. So I have a question to Daniel, referring to your part 1, 3.4, product module, point number 2. Part 1, 3.4, point number 2. Daniel Tan, I have a question here. You mentioned that the system shall enable the admin to update the product catalog. So under point number 2, you have 2.1. The admin should be able to edit product details which may have mistake, which is spelling wrong price to the product or image or the product that need to be up to date or the product that need up to be up to date the product that need up to date here is referring to what daniel uh, and then uh, the product that need up to date is image yeah. it's like they if there's if the logo is the slogan or any 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 image any image yeah, from the from the they, if the company the manufacturer if they if they release a product that a new new image new new layout new design so they can so they can so they can let us the let us the system to to release the new to replace the new uh, replace the old old one the old product old product product design it's like uh, for example uh, um, tiger tiger biscuit uh, packaging uh, because they because the old one is is uh, if it's like the nine, it's like the image of a 90, 90 cartoon, but they replace it, they replace it into the new one, so they can, so uh, they new release in, so they can, so they ask the ask all the manufacturer, ask the system, ask for us, uh, for a demonstrator, to, to change the image, uh, to change the image, the image of, of the product itself, a uh, product of of itself. The spelling type typo is actually. If the spelling, if the spelling, if the spelling of the product itself getting, uh, getting mistakenly, I uh, get the, uh, written, written in mistake, uh, mistake lah. For the for uh, the wrong price, um, it's it's actually what's already setting by the by the by the by the, by the by the shop itself, but but the price yeah uh, written written wrongly and uh, getting mistake, uh, getting mistake and uh, mis mistakenly uh, mistaken. Getting mistaken by the by by the custom and they 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 and they notice some price that are really not quite uh, not quite unusual. All sudden unusual. All sudden um it's like uh unusual. So so which which make the which make also which make are uh, they ask we ask the ask the ask the administrator to uh, change and uh, change the price. Why the price is all sudden the price is is expensive is unusual. Unusual for unusual uh, within the catalog itself. Okay, so let's say Daniel, I give you one event. So let's say your stop and shop, right? This mm -hmm. shop want to do a promotion. So let's say you have a new update price for the promotion. Mm -hmm. And which point in your part here, the update price should go? Update, update is price. not wrong price. Mm. Update price. It's updated price, but I, I didn't I didn't return more specifically about it. Uh, because yeah, product model. Because uh, when I first read uh, read your part here, the first thing I was thinking is, what if my I mean what is what if your shop have like a promotion? So promotion usually usually people will do the price cut. So that's mean we need to update our catalog lah here because here you, refer, you you are referring to a catalog product catalog so in your product catalog catalog i didn't see here in your part that you will update the price because i think price is another important element in your product but you didn't mention here right so uh, yeah, for, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's not it's it's not wrong actually i just want to ask 
Okay. Thank you, cannot, Daniel. No, 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 no a lot lah. Yeah, <laughs> understand more. Yeah, don't worry. I want you to your mark on that. I have next question to Noel. Noel, what are you? Scroll back. Yes. Noel, Noel. Uh, no, I have a question for you referring to your part one, part one, section number five, five point five point five customer module. Customer module, right? So for your customer module, let's say, uh, so let's say if I want to ask, customer should have their own account, right? For your system. Uh, yeah. So I want to ask who will manage your customer account? Can the admin or do the admin uh, have the privilege to? Wait down. For this system, only the customer themselves uh, update the, de the details. So the admin do not have the access or they cannot manage the, um, the customer account? Yeah, because based on the admin module also, they didn't state uh, the admin will uh, update the customer details. So 5.3, it is not linked to your part. 5.3 is admin module. Admin, do not link to 5.5, is it? Oh, that one. So if any, <clears throat> sorry. So if anything happened to the customer account, they cannot retrieve back whatever in there. For example, data loss. So the, ad, the admin cannot do anything about it. Is it? Oh, means the admin will uh, delete the customer details. I mean, like, yeah. I want to ask you who can manage the customer account other than the customer. Uh, in my understanding, only the customer. Oh, okay. Okay. Like I said, it's not wrong. However, in the system, usually the admin will manage the customer account. Okay, super admin will manage the admin. Admin will manage the user account. Here in, his, in your system, the, your user is the customer. Okay, Noel. So, that's all my question for you. Thank you. Now, we go back to Lim. Just now my question is on non-functional requirement. Yeah. Um, I think one of the non-functional requirement is the security, uh, which the system shall protect uh, confidential data and do not disclose the data to any third party, which is not associated with the organization. Okay, so for example, your data that you should protect is the what? Customer detail, like no Customer else. detail. Said just now. So... If you set data, that means the admin have access to the customer data, to the customer data. Uh, uh, referring to what Noel said just now, I don't think the admin can access to customer data. So how do they can expose the data if they cannot have the access to the customer data? It's confusing, right, Lim? However, it's okay. I will stop there because if not, then yeah.
it will more it will be more confusing however yes security they should the data the system should protect the customer or the confidentiality of the customer okay lim thank you so okay. is there any question from other student no right so thank you to wong lim kelvin daniel noel so now can we move to i think the last one is Russell. Hi. So yes, you can present. Um. Wait, uh, is everyone here? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I guess I'll start. So, um, good morning, Miss, and everyone here. Uh, today, my group and I will be presenting our assignment. So, my group will consist of me, Ivan, uh, Chase Luting, which will be Celine, Elvin, Shakon Ken, Farah, and Russell. So, for the organization and current system background, uh, the application system that our group will be conducting research and analysis is a forward, forwarding management system. And the company that we have chosen for this is an ABX Express. So ABX Express started its Malaysia and Brunei operations in 1984 at Labuan and has since grown to service the whole nation through its own network. So their vision is to be the best by ensuring that the customer is at the center of everything we do and their mission is to invest in our people to deliver beyond satisfaction to our customers, stakeholders, and themselves. Um, the, the services provided by them is Domestic Express Package, Domestic Parcel Express, Package Document Express, and Package Parcel Express. So for ABX Express Air Freight Cars and Bulk Distribution, uh, they will usually do local deliveries or same-day delivery. Um, logistic activities for APX Express and warehousing, transportation and fulfillment. And as for special and value added services in APX Express are cash on deliveries, uh, late pickups, smart ship, smart track and real time tracking information. Uh, so the problems faced by this current system will be Celine that will be presenting. So for the problem faced by the current system, Next. The first problem faced by the customers are um, ABX is not providing optimal efficiency for delivering parcel to the customers. So customer can only track their parcel by typing in their tracking number and view simple status of their parcels. Next is customer complaints uh, regarding on the inconsistency inconsistent service by ABX where the parcel will be kept at the facility for a long period of time uh, without notifying the customer and the parcels are being delivered without the customer knowing which leads to the customer eh, which which leads to the parcel being stolen while the customer is away. Next is customer that missed their parcel due to being busy or any other reasons usually will not be notifi notified that their parcels has arrived, which uh, it will then return to the facility without even notifying the customers. 
next would be the overview use case diagram. Uh, so for the use case diagram, uh, we have six actors uh, and five is user and one is system actor. And then for customer, they can access the uh, profile maintenance, uh, maintain their own profile and then partial maintenance suite is view their uh, status of their partial. And then customer, they, they also can access the career maintenance suite is view the status of career full delivering their partial and then customer support suite is when customer need help and then they will use the customer function and then customer support function. And then for the career boy, uh, they can access the career maintenance. They, they will, okay, access with the career maintenance which is their location will provide to the career maintenance. They also have the system location provider service, which will provide the career location to the career maintenance. And also the support staff, they will access for the support, customer support. And then the general staff will access the delivery queue management, which is means the delivery queue. And then administrative staff actor will access the career management, which is manage the career. So for the initial class diagram, as you can see, each support staff is assigned to one or many customers, and each customer can be supported by one or many support staff, uh, which depends on the severity of the problem. Then each customer receives one or many parcels, and each parcel can be received by only one customer. So each parcel is containing one, you know, one delivery queue, and each delivery queue can contain one or many parcels. Uh, each parcel is delivered by one courier, and each courier uh, deliver, can deliver one or many parcels, uh, depending on how many they are sent here. So each delivery queue is managed by one or many general staff. The uh, Each of the gen, uh, general staff will manage one delivery queue. And then each courier is managed by one administrative staff, where each administrative staff can manage one or many couriers. Uh, finally, each courier is assigned to one delivery queue, and each delivery queue is, is handled by one courier. Uh, so I'll be presenting the first module in the system, which is the customer profile maintenance. So for the functional requirements, um, customers should be able to update personal information, such as their phone number and address. Uh, customers should be able to view personal information. Customers should be able to view delivery history. Customers should be able to add available pickup or receive parcel time. And finally, customers should be able to view a summary of pending deliveries on a selected day. So as for the detail use diagram, the actor will be the customer. And within the module, there will be five cases, which is similar to the functional requirements which are update personal information, view personal detail, view delivery history, add available pickup or receive parcel time, uh, and view a summary of pending deliveries on the selected day. Uh, as for the use case description, so the name of the use case will be using the update personal information. And as for the brief description, the customer will be updating their personal information because of changing of uh, maybe their phone number or they have moved to a new address. And as for the actors, it will be customer as defined by the detail use case diagram. So the precondition is that the customer is logged in. And so there will be two main flows, which are the actor action and the system response. And it will first start from the customer enters a new phone number and or address. And then for the system, it will prompt the it will prompt to confirm changes of the phone number and or address. And then the customer will be confirming the changes. And for the system system response, it will be updating the customer's database record. And then it will then display the changes saved by the message. So for the alternate flows, um, which is number three, uh, if the customer cancel the changes, the system remains unchanged. And lastly, for the post condition, customer's phone number and or address have been updated. Uh, next. Okay, so for activity diagram, 
uh, it also follows the use case description flows. So as you can see here, it will first start from the customer and then it will go to the system by counting the component changes and then it will go back to the customer by asking them to confirm the changes. And if the customer confirms it, it will update the customer database and then it will display the changes saved by the message. And if the customer cancels the changes, it will then just go back to the end. And next. So for the sequence diagram, uh, it is also similar to the activity diagram. And there will be two control life, which will be the update personal information and the customer database. And there will be one that is called update personal information UI, which will display the user interface of the system. So um, like, for example, it will start here from the update personal information, which is the second box after the customer. And as you can see, it will start from the UI and then it just uh, follows the flow of the entire system. Uh, next. So as for the collaboration diagram, it is uh, similar to the sequence diagram, but it will be following the numbering. So like in this case, um, it will start the interface, which is one, and then followed by uh, where is it? click update personal information and then you will get the personal information and you will get the personal information from the customer database and so on. Uh, next. So lastly, it will be the state chart diagram. So as you can see, it will, uh, it will, <clears throat> excuse me. It will be focusing more on the states of the, the system and so like from here it will first start from uh, selecting the update personal information and then it will then display the personal information from the system and if the customer updates the personal information the system will read the personal information and then from here as you can see the confirm update personal information if the uh, the customer clicks yes the system will read the confirmation and update it but then if the customer clicks no yeah it will just end the system so the next module i'll pass it to the next person so for the parcel maintenance module so for the functional requirement the customer should be able to view the parcel estimated time of arrival and customers should be able to reschedule the parcel's delivery date. Customers should also be able to receive notifications when the parcel is being delivered. Customers should also be able to receive notification when the assigned courier is nearby. Uh, customers should be able to edit or set their custom delivery address. And customers should be able to decline delivery and lastly, customers should be able to view parcel detail or its delivery status. So for the detailed use case diagram, uh, the use cases here, there are seven, which is based on the functional requirement. So um, there are view detail parcel delivery stat and delivery status, view parcel estimated arrival time, parcel uh, receive parcel delivered notification, receive notification when assigned courier is nearby, decline delivery, reschedule parcel delivery date and edit custom del delivery address. For the use case description, it is based on the reschedule parcel delivery date. So for the description is a uh, customer a reschedule a parcel that was scheduled to be delivered on a day that customer is not available. So the actor is the customer and the precondition is a uh, customer has an undelivered parcel. So first the customer would have to select a parcel to be rescheduled. Then the system would display the selected parcel detail and delivery time. Then the customer would have to enter the rescheduled date and the system would validate the entered rescheduled date and then it will prompt the rescheduled confirmation. Then customer will have to confirm the parcel reschedule date. 
then the system would display the parcel rescheduled confirmation and then would update the parcel delivery date. And lastly, display the new parcel detail and rescheduled date. So for the alternative flow, it is on the step four, which is to validate entered rescheduled date. So if the customer entered an uh, invalid rescheduled date, the system will display error message, uh, invalid res rescheduled date, and then prompt the customer to re-enter the rescheduled date. Next is the step six, which is confirm parcel rescheduled date. Um, if the customer cancels the, co the reschedule confirmation, the parcel's uh, delivery date will remain unchanged. So for the post con condition, um, customer's parcel delivery date is rescheduled. Next. Uh, for the activity diagram, it is the same as the uh, use case description. It will first uh, show that cut from the customer you will first select the parcels, then the system would display the parcel detail, then the customer would re-enter re the rescheduled date, and then the system validates. Customer will have to confirm the rescheduled date, and then uh, it would uh, check if customer cancel or confirm the rescheduled date. And then uh, the system will update the delivery date based on the confirmation. For the sequence diagram, uh, there are three lifelines, uh, which is reschedule parcel UI, reschedule parcel, and parcel database. So uh, it will start with uh, start UI from the reschedule parcel. Then the customer would select the parcel that they want to reschedule. Then you will get the parcel detail from the parcel database and we return the uh, parcel detail and display to the customer. And then customer would enter the date and there's an alternative interaction here where uh, if the rescheduled date is valid, you will then prompt the confirmation to the customer. And if it's uh, invalid, it will then display a dis an er error message and the customer will have to enter the rescheduled date again. Then, uh, then the customer enters the confirmation choice. Choice. Then, uh, it will be verified if there is another alternative flaw where, like, uh, if customer confirm, it will then update the parcel detail and return the new parcel detail. If it cancel, the uh, old parcel will remain the same. For the collaboration diagram, it is the same as the sequence diagram, uh, with, but it is uh, numbered in like sequence. So you can see that it start interface, then select cu customer select the parcel and get the selector parcel detail, and then you will then uh, re-enter. You have to enter the rescheduled date and then confirm update then the, uh, the system will update the parcel. Next. For the state ch chart diagram, uh, it is the state uh, when we're scheduling the parcel. So for the first state is selecting, the customer will have to select the parcel that they want to reschedule. And then next, you will move to rescheduling date, uh, rescheduling state. Then a uh, customer would be entering the rescheduled date. And then you move to confirm scheduling state where uh, you will receive the customer confirmation. If the confirmation is no, you will end the process. If it's yes, you will update the delivery date. Next, I will pass to Elvin. Uh, so Career maintenance model, and then, uh, okay. So for this is function is the view the career, the location of career that delivering the partial of the customer and also the vehicle and flow of the career. Uh, and then see location of the career. And then 
also able to chat with the career that currently devouring their partial. And also after the partial list, the customer, after they accept it, they can able to add the feedback and reading on the current career that uh, they, they will deliver their partial. Uh, next slide. Okay, so for the this case, customer can access all uh, the view the assigned career info, uh, view the vehicle info, view the career location info, and then chat with career, and then also uh, every pair in there or the, on the career that they will really deliver the brochure. And then career will only access with the chat with assigned, chat with career, this case. And then they have one more actor is the system actor, which is for the where the career location is provide the location of the career. Uh, next slide. So the uh, my use case resolution name is the real assigned career time location, which is for as customer will will select the option to reveal the career real time location. So uh, the actor is customer location and location provider service. Uh, so the precondition is there must be career delivering their customer sees parcel. And then first is the actor actually is the customer will select to request for view to view the real time location of the career. And this system will first check whether they have career assigned to their home, home desk or not. So uh, if have career, then they will, uh, the system will check the location of the career and then after that display the career location to customer. And then customer will get the real time location of career. But uh, if after a customer requests the real time location from the system, but there is no career uh, delivering the car, the partial to customer home, then there will be directly displayed a message that currently no career are assigned for delivery to your house address message. Uh, next slide. So our activity diagram. So first is the customer request the location of the career which is the career that they will de deliver their partial. So system will check whether they have career that deliver their partial. If no, then uh, if found first, okay, they will check whether they have career delivery their partial. If no, then directly display currently no career are assigned for deliver to your home address message and then the system will end here. If have, then they will first go to the location service provider which is request the location of the career and then display the career location info. After that, the customer will get the career real-time location. Uh, and then the system will end here. Uh, next slide. So for sequence diagram, okay. And uh, first is the system will start UI and then the real assign career location UI will, will, will display the UI to the customer. And then the customer will request the real time location. So the message will go to system. And the system will go to the delivery queue, check whether the bounce, check whether they have career are uh, delivering the partial to customer address. So, and then the delivery queue will return the message to the, to the, you, you, to the system. So first, uh, uh, if there, there is no career activity in the partial to customer address, they will directly display the current no career uh, assigned for delivery to your house address message. So, but if they have career, career uh, delivering their partial, there will be uh, the system will request the location for the location provider service. And then after that, the location provider service will return the career location info to the system and then the system you uh the system you return the career location info to the ui uh next slide so collaboration diagram first is start ui and then after that customer will choose the option to view view the real view the career real time location and then the real career message will send to the real career location object and then send again to the real career location object. After that, the real career location object will send the message for check the bound status, which is check whether they have 
currently I de deliver the partial to customer home address. So this object, this message will send, send to the delivery queue object. And then after that, the delivery queue will get the assigned courier location from the assigned from the location provider object. And then location provider object will return the, the current location message to delivery queue. And then to real courier location object, after that to real courier location UI, and then customer will see the current location is the display courier location UI message. You send back to the customer. Uh, next slide. Uh, so for the status, first is after the customer request for the location, the status will be checking. So if there is no courier are sending the partial, they will directly go to the display message status. This display is no courier are delivering the partial, and the system will end here. But if they have uh, courier are delivering the partial, so it will go to the checking location status. And then after checking location, after they get the location, it will get to display message status to the customer, which is display the location of that courier and the system will end here. Uh, so uh, next slide. Okay. Okay, so I will present my module customer support mm -hmm. mode. On Kensha. I'm sorry to jump in here, but I think because this one is going to move to the next person already on Kensha, I think for this group, we cannot make it within uh, within nine minutes. So I suggest us to stop at Alvin here, but we won't proceed this at our next class because at our next session for OID, I plan to do like a it's not like I want to finish all the exercise for our lecture notes and our material. So for this group only, is it possible? Oh sorry, is it possible for us to have like a short presentation? Uh, short present. I mean, this presentation we continue at night tonight. Is it possible only for this group? Mm, Celine, are you okay with that tonight? Vincent, Ivan, Alvin, Konken, Shak. Mm, okay, so I think we will stop at Alvin first. Yeah, we will stop at Alvin part. So tonight we will start, I think, around 7. 7 p.m. should be okay. So it won't be long. So um, later maybe one of you can create the GM and then you can post it in our in our group so other students who want to join the presentation can join the presentation okay so i think oh yeah before we end our class today one more thing last night last night or saturday i don't remember i sent an invitation for foa final online assessment in your gm for gm so please check your email and accept my invitation okay that one is your for your final exam so i think for now we can stop now and for this group i'll see you later again at 7 p.m evening okay so before we dismiss is there any question from other student okay since no okay since no i think we can dismiss now okay guys see you bye bye thank you miss